Hey guys, it's Audrey Steeman again, and today we're going to do some kinetic typography. I'm going to be using a font that I recently created called Lucky Letters, which you can download for free in my store. And I'm also going to include the After Effects file for free as well, and you can find that in the description too. So let's go and make some letters move. So here we are in After Effects, and if I go to my composition settings, um, I just did a 1080 by 1080 square, 5 seconds, 24 frames a second, nothing crazy. And for this first effect, which is displacement maps, um, I'm going to go to my Illustrator file, which I kind of have some of these letters and words um, kind of ready for me here. And using Overlord, I'm just going to push that to After Effects, so it's already the exact size that I want. And to see that, I'm going to go to Layer, New, and add a solid for a solid background. And I'll just color pick one of my personal brand colors here, send that to the back. So, so when you do something in, in Illustrator, um, like a text layer or whatever, and you send it through Overlord to After Effects, uh, it keeps it as a text layer, which is really cool. So you don't have to worry about remaking your composition or anything like that. And so now I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to add an adjustment layer for the top. Then going to Effects and Presets, I'm going to add a displacement map. Double click on that. And then the only thing that we need to do this is uh, texture. And you can kind of create your own moving texture using uh, multiple images, or you can use a video. And in this case, I'm going to use a video of this really trippy, acidy, um, acid <laughs> video. Uh, it's really cool. I need to kind of edit it a little bit so it's grayscale. Um, just so it can kind of get those values a little bit easier um, to be able to displace the uh, the letter and everything. So before I do anything else, I'm going to add a black and white layer to this video. I'm going to use the luminance channel. Um, and so I'll just kind of like mess with some of these settings here just to give it a little more contrast. And since this is procedural, you can, you can edit this whenever you want to if it's not giving you the effect that you want. I'm going to lock that, that background layer. I'm going to go to my adjustment layer. I'm going to change it to that um, acid video, the seamless loop, source, effects, and masks. And then I'm going to change both of these to the luminance channel. And then usually I'll do at least like 10 pixels or so and you just kind of mess with it however you want. And then I'm going to hide this um, seamless loop video. You can already see it's, uh, it's getting pretty wild, but it's as simple as that. It's really just three layers that you need to do something like this. And to kind of get rid of that um, border shift kind of thing, check wrap pixels around so it won't affect the border and it'll just affect whatever subject you have going on. There. And for this next one, we're going to actually use a full word. I just typed out lucky here in my Illustrator file, and it's still a live type file. And I'll push that to After Effects. I'm actually going to change the text color. So here with this effect, I'm kind of going to go for like a cell, hand-drawn, borders kind of jittery look. Um, and then each of the letters are going to individually kind of jitter on their own as well. So it almost looks kind of like a stop motion -y thing. So to do that, I don't want this to be a live type file. So I'm going to right click on that and go to create, create shapes from text. You can see all of the letters are separated out and really all I'm going to do uh, eventually is just animate their position. But to get that cell um, kind of jittery border look, I'm going to add an effect to the text itself and not do an adjustment layer just so it doesn't affect the background. I'm going to add a turbulent displace. Double click on that and you can see it's already pretty wonky and that's way too big for what we want. So you can mess with the settings however you want, but to get this effect, I'm going to bring the size down to 2 and then kind of mess with the amount. You can kind of see it looks pretty rough on the edges, which is a nice kind of hand done quality. Probably gonna keep it down to maybe 45 or so. Now when you play it, nothing happens uh, because you need to kind of add an animation factor to it. So that's gonna be with evolution here, this variable. So I'm actually gonna alt click on the evolution stopwatch here and I'm going to type in time times 100 and just kind of see like what we what we get from that if you look closely you can kind of see it's like slowly morphing around um it's not that noticeable though so i'm going to amp that up quite a bit now it's a lot more visible kind of creepy looking uh because it's super smooth and we're gonna kind of mess with that towards the end here but now i want to edit the position and movement of the individual letters. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to adjust the anchor point for each of these letters here. Try to put that roughly in the center for each of these. 
So because this was a text layer before, the anchor point is going to kind of stay at that default, which is this bottom left corner. You'll definitely want to make sure that that uh, small little anchor point is, uh, is moved for each letter. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go under each of these letters and then transform and then I'll click on the position variable. And then I'll just type in wiggle. I'll try two and five and see if that's too much or too little. Moving away a little too much for my liking. I think that'll be good. So two and three are our magic numbers here. And I'm just going to apply that for the rest of the letters. Now all the letters move on their own, which is really cool. But I also kind of want some of that rotation factor as well, as if they've been slightly adjusted. So I'm going to go back and just apply the same exact thing to the rotation. Awesome. So now all the letters move on their own and they're all being individually adjusted, but I don't want that smoothness. I want it to look more like a stop motion effect. So I'm going to add a new adjustment layer and then add a posterized time effect. So right now it defaults 24. That's what our composition is. I'm going to bump it down to 12, cut that in half and see what that does. A little closer, not quite. I'm going to bump it down to eight. Might even bump them down to six. Yeah, I think that's that's more in line with the with the effect that I was going for. And you can adjust obviously the amount of movement kind of going on, the amount of rotation, um, if you want to animate them in or out. Um, but this is a super simple, easy effect. And in this effect, uh, we're just going to be animating the heights and kind of uh, stretching and squashing the letter. If you're familiar with the motion designer Matt Voice, uh, he's kind of like the the known industry standard for kinetic typography and being able to stretch letters and give them some really dynamic movement. Um, so we're gonna do that here with just the height. We're really only gonna be affecting these top anchor points and the bottom ones here. After importing this from my Illustrator file, I'm gonna turn it into um, a shape. So if you right click on the layer, create shapes from text, so now they're all individual points. If you click on the pen tool, you can see where each of those points are. And luckily we don't have a ton, so it'll be easier to work with. After some rabbit holing of this, of this layer here, you want to go down your contents and find the path variable. And if we want this to be kind of our starting and ending point, I'm going to put a keyframe there at the very beginning. So after you lock your background layer, because you don't want to select this on accident, you're going to take your pen tool. And just by clicking on one of these corners here, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to select individual points. And I'm going to take just this kind of bottom half or bottom quarter here. And at the one second mark, I'm going to drag these all the way down to here. And similarly, I'm going to take the top keyframes up here and drag them up. So immediately you can already see that it's uh, stretching properly. That's just animating the path. And to make it cooler, I'm going to select these keyframes and easy ease them. Go into my graph editor here. Make sure it's on the speed setting. You can change that down here with the graph type. Edit speed graph. And I usually like to kind of go a little wild with it at first and then kind of edit back. So I like how that stretches out quickly and then kind of slows down like that. You can obviously make the beginning state of this uh, smaller if you want, uh, and you can kind of shrink those those points down even further if you want, but I'm just going to kind of keep this at the original state. And to get this to loop uh, kind of back and forth on its own, um, I'm going to use the special expression that I got from Motion Design School. I'm going to alt click on the path variable, paste this in here, and then I just added, uh, I just copied and pasted that first keyframe of the initial state here at the end um, and just kind of adjusting the, the time on that. It looks like it's squashing and stretching. So with this next one, this is kind of the general breakdown of what we're about to kind of animate. So this is the original state of that letter. I didn't have a thin version or a bold version of this font. Uh, this is kind of it. And if I convert the text to outlines and then go to object, path, and offset path, I can ultimately, if you look at the blue lines, you can kind of see, you can ultimately kind of create your own thin or thick version of that of that letter. So that's kind of the principle here. But luckily with this effect, we don't really have to do anything from Illustrator to do this in After Effects, but if I undo that and then just send the original letter to After Effects, change the color of this real quick, this a little bigger just for just for demonstration purposes. So this is the letter and I kid you not, it is literally as simple as going to contents, add, offset paths, and under amount, literally just 
edit the offset. <laughs> Same exact principle as in Illustrator, um, but just in After Effects, it's just adding some keyframes to it. And with the offset, I might start at zero actually, just to show what the uh, original state of the letter is supposed to be. I'm gonna start with zero and then at like 12 frames maybe, I'll increase that up. Maybe like that, so it kind of balloons out a little bit. I'll add some easy ease, edit the speed graph a little bit. It might be interesting to see what the complete opposite of that looks like as well, where it's super thin. So maybe I will add a keyframe here, where it goes all the way back down. Still get some of that, some of that weight there. And then maybe I'll bring that back up to the original state. I'll edit this speed on these a little bit. And I'll add a couple more keyframes just so it's a little more fluid motion. So after adding some keyframes and some speed graph edits, uh, easy ease and all that stuff, um, we already kind of have a loop, uh, looping GIF of uh, just some different states of that letter, just using the offset paths and some keyframes. For this next effect, which is probably my personal favorite, uh, we're gonna actually use some Photoshop. If I go to my Illustrator file real quick, um, I'm gonna use this E and I'm just gonna copy it. Uh, it's not converted to outlines or anything, uh, but I'm just gonna copy this in paste it into Photoshop as a smart object. I'm going to change its color real quick by adding a color overlay. So it's kind of more of that off black. I'm actually gonna do a white on black <laughs> just to clearly see the contrast and just to kind of see um, how cool this effect can be. What I'm essentially gonna do here is uh, add a mask to this and then using um, various kinds of brushes. I love using these um, like matchbook brushes from Retro Supply. Uh, just to kind of get some like grit and grain in there, um, but it's being masked out. It's not a texture overlaying anything. That's kind of the difference here, but I'll just add some quick like brushy texture kind of stuff here. And then what I'm gonna do, since this is a smart object, I'm gonna go to filter, distort and displace, and I'll do 10 and 10 for now. And then I'll choose a displacement map a Photoshop document that's black and white. And it kind of just like chunkifies everything, kind of just, I mean, obviously displaces some stuff here and there. Um, but it kind of looks like it was painted outside the edges a little bit. So it's not so uh, crisp and clean like this is. It's a little more realistic in that it's a little grungier. But I'm going to do this uh, like four to like ten times um, because each of these will kind of act as a keyframe. That's kind of the whole principle here is that uh, it's not necessarily animation like in terms of using keyframes but it's more of a piling on a bunch of images together and just kind of looping it um, so that it kind of has that, that emulation of motion. I'm going to do this a couple more times and then we'll throw it into After Effects. So after I've made, I've made about eight of these. I'm just going to select all of them, right click, and then quick export as PNG. And if we go back to After Effects, I made them a little extra um, higher resolution just so we didn't lose um, that texture and everything. But I'll select all these and just scale them down so they fit properly. And then similar with like making your own texture and stuff, um, I'm going to cut all of these down to maybe like four frames for now we could expand it later if we want and then doesn't matter which way but selecting all of them i'm going to go to keyframe assistant and then sequence layers we just loop what we have right now and just let it play back there we go it's kind of like a painted um frame by frame kind of kind of animation for a letter or word it's super simple. You kind of have to put a little more legwork into it with like Photoshop or Procreate, but uh, I think the effect is pretty cool. So I actually have a bonus tip. Um, this isn't anything crazy, but this is kind of one of those uh, I think it'd be super fun. It's kind of like an inverted fish eye, fish bowl kind of lens kind of thing. So if I turn off uh, the, the lens effect here real quick, I uh, just have a background and then these three text layers are essentially the same ones, but at the very beginning, I set this middle text layer with the L. It's kind of like where lucky letters start. Um, this is kind of its starting position. And then this is kind of the end or like the tail end of lucky letters. So this is the S. Um, then I have that set in that position. And then as it goes through, it goes through the whole two words. And then here towards the end, we see that S again. And then I just copied and pasted um, and kind of matched up where 
uh, the start and end points are. Um, hopefully that's not too confusing, but essentially having it restart or having it end uh, exactly how it started so that it perfectly loops. Uh, and then the most simplest of effects um, that you just need to add is called CC Lens. So if you go here to the, the effect controls, the main thing you kind of need to edit is just the size and like how much of that warping you want to happen, as well as some of the uh, convergence as well. Uh, so you want to keep it positive to kind of have it uh, expand outward. So yeah, you can just kind of play with this effect as much as you want. Just kind of get that subtle warping effect uh, so it looks like it's rotating around the camera. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. Hopefully these are some different kind of kinetic typography tips that you don't see very often. It's mostly uh, texture related, but you know, I love texture. <laughs> If you have any suggestions to make any of these tips better or ones that can kind of stem off from these, uh, put them in the comments below. Be sure to check out my store for the free After Effects file and a free font. You can play with lucky letters however you want. Feel free to tag me um, on Instagram or Twitter at Ball of Odd uh, if you make anything with it. I'm very curious to see uh, what you guys create with it. And that is all I have for you. So thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you next time.